Hi, fifth graders. I hope we're all doing well. I'm doing fine. Today is April 2nd, and today I'd like to focus on some, uh, some small parts of our pieces and scales and some call and response, where I play something and I want you to try to play it back to me. Uh, if you're not tuned yet, please go watch my video called Tuning Sequence or just find a tuner and tune yourself. Uh, check your strings here. Here's an E, A, D, G, C, and uh, let's get started. How about a D major scale? One, two, three, and go play. And a G scale already, and go play. If any violin players know how to play the higher octave, go ahead and play now. G scale, ready, go. Now a C scale, ready, and go now. Cellos and violas, try to play the lower version of your C scale this time, where you start from open C. Or if you already do that one, do the high version where you start on your G string now. Ready and go now. Okay, so let's try to do some call and response, which means I'll play something and I'd like for you to try to play it back to me. Uh, let's start simple, and I'll just start with my D string, and I want you to try to figure out everything from there. So it'll be me, 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 you, you, you. Here we go. So listen, and then play what I play. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Okay, we can stop there. Okay, good job, everybody. I hope I hope those made sense.
Okay, let's get going. How about we do, um, oh, I just lost it. Where did it go? Sahara Crossing to start off with. I'd like to focus more on spots than playthroughs today because you can do the playthroughs on your own now. Or if you want to play with the other parts, you can go back and watch the other videos. But in Sahara Crossing, we have an awesome crescendo and decrescendo from everybody in measure nine. In measure nine. So we need to start piano, start soft, and then we crescendo into forte strong, and then we back off right after we hit the downbeat of 10. So for example, for the first violins, they start soft and get strong like this. Three, four. And you'll notice I try to do it by moving closer to the bridge to get louder. So don't just press harder. You'll hurt your <clears throat> excuse me. You'll hurt your arm if you just press harder. But if you keep it relaxed and just let the weight transfer through your arm, through your wrist, through your fingers into the bow, you can get a lot of power without having to stress it out. In fact, the more you stress, the less powerful it will sound. And the more that you relax and let it just sit in there, the more powerful it will, it will be. Don't crane your elbow up super high, but also don't have it down low because this doesn't transfer any weight correctly. So have it in the middle, like our, like our square. Do you see my square from right here to right there to right there to right there? Okay, uh, here's measure nine. Everybody play with me at nine, whatever your part is, and crescendo and then decrescendo. Here we go, nine, ready, and go, and. Now I'll play with the second violins. Ready, and go, and. And again. Can you start from like a 2 out of 10 and crescendo to like an 8 out of 10? <coughs> Here we go, measure 9. Ready, and go, and. Now I'll play with the violas. C, 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 E flat. Here we go. The violas. But everybody play your part. Here's 9 and 10. 3, 4. Whoops, sorry. Again, ready, go. Again, go. And now the cellos. Uh, I'll, I'll switch to the cello for the cello and bass part. I hope these dynamics are being played in a way that somebody in your house can tell that you're working on playing quieter and louder. Let me say that again. I hope that you're playing this in a way that somebody else in your house can hear the fact that you're working on playing softer and then louder and then softer. All right, is this Arco? No, this is pizzicato for cello and basses. Okay, here we go. Just measures nine and 10. Ready and go now. like this, I like to circle the target note. So I think you might be able to figure out what I mean by the target note. Which note are we targeting in this piece? I would circle the downbeat of 10 because that is the note that we're leading to. And then now I'll play with the bass players. Here we go. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. All right, the next spot. Um, we'll come back to that one. 
Let's skip to 43 uh, and, and just have my cellos and basses play. Uh, let's have everybody play at 43. This is the part that goes. And it will have all of the violins and violas with the one, two, three, four, one. Here we go. 43, starting on the downbeat. So cellos and basses wait two beats. Here we go. Three, four. Da, da. And then let's switch back and go to measure number uh, 30. Is that 34? No, 24. Measure 24. And let's play everybody's part. Uh, let's start with the basses, but everybody play your part. 24, 3 and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and... Make sure you crescendo there. It should be a down bow and then an up bow. We can really get a great crescendo on an up bow because the tip is light and the frog is heavy. So we go from light to... And then we get heavier as we get to our frog. Uh, the French call this the talon, like the, the talons of an eagle, the claws of an eagle. Frog, soft, squishy kind of animal. But the talon, I think, better describes the frog of the bow. It sounds more... More aggressive. Uh, and keep going on. Here's 24 again, and this time I'll play with the cellos. Ready, and roll. Here we go again, three and four and one. Again, crescendoing as you do that up bow. Now we'll switch back to violin. Here is the, uh, I'll play the viola part first. All right, measure 24 for the violas. Ready, and go, and. Yep, yeah, not too bad for the violas, you'll be fine. And then for the second violins, have a nice crescendo. Ready, and go, and. And then the first violins have a run here. Uh, first, just listen, nobody play. Notice that this has a high two for the F sharp, because it's an F sharp and not just an F. That's an F sharp, that's an F. Uh, a, G, F sharp, G, A, and then it's a B flat, low one, and then it's a C, not a C sharp, a C. So make sure you have this shape. There's an even spacing between one and two, and between two and three. They're the same. There's about one finger width in between each of those. So we have da 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 So everybody try to play at 24 with the crescendo and with these funny notes from the first violin. So here we go. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and again ready and go and one and two and three And a little bit faster, ready, and go, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and. Uh, again at that speed, ready, and go, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and. I think I'm starting too loud. I'm going to back off for the beginning of this so that the crescendo sounds better. So let's see how that goes. So I'm going to be up here by the fingerboard, ready, and 
24 go. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and. I think that sounds a lot better. What do you guys think? Send me an email or a message on your mind. All right, put this one away. And let's take out Zuma Breakers. We have some more spots to check in Zuma Breakers. Okay, violas have it in the beginning, and second violins have it at 13. I'd like to hear seconds at 13 and violas at the beginning playing this same part, because you all have this. In past videos, I have asked you to circle a certain note. I told the violas, I'm not sure that I told the second violins, so let me tell my seconds. Second violins measure 14, circle your fourth note. That's the first B of that measure. It happens on, uh, on a beat where you don't expect it to happen. That's the first time it happens, uh, but I expect each time you have that note happen, like in measure 16, it happens again. I want you to make that note stick out. Stick out and play it a little bit louder. That way it doesn't sound like it's an accident. <laughs> okay, violas and seconds. Violas at the beginning, seconds at 13. Let's just play four measures. Ready, and go, and. <laughs> I don't think you have this part in your music, but you are welcome to try to play along with us. The part is A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 B, 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 A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 B, 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 B. Here we go. Good luck, everybody. Ready and go now. A, A, A. When we have notes that happen on beats where we don't expect it like that, uh, that is called syncopation. Syncopation. Like in sync, uh, like synchronized, synchronicity. Uh, syncopation means that something is still with it, but it's on a beat where you don't quite expect it. Syncopation. This piece has more of that. Uh, for example, no, let's not do that one, sorry. Let's move on to um, 21, please. So in 21, here we go. Uh, make sure you exaggerate your shorts and your longs. Uh, when you play a short, don't make it like super duper short, like <coughs> because that doesn't sound good. And our goal is to always make beautiful sounds, to always make nice sounds. Usually, and some pieces ask for some for some gross sounds, but usually we're aiming to get uh, a pleasant sound. So short, but not like. No. Okay, here's 21. One and two and ready and play go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and one and 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 two and three and four. And one and two and three. Something super cool happens in the last measure, uh, 28, because the violins, violas, and cello, sorry, the violins and violas should be crescendoing while the basses and cellos, while they just had their melody, and they were just loud, they're decrescendoing. So we've got violins, violas, 
going up, shells and bases going down in dynamics, getting stronger and then getting softer. So let me switch over to cello so I can play the cello bass part. Okay, here we go, 21. I'll play the cello bass part. The cello and the bass part are the exact same here. Here we go, ready and go, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, and 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 one. A random tip I'd like to throw at you. So you notice that I do lots of counting and playing at the same time. Right? It's mostly to simulate a metronome for you. It's also to keep myself steady. Uh, that's, uh, it's something that I've just grown accustomed to doing because I've practiced it. It's hard. But if you can count something and play it at the same time, that means you really, really know it. Uh, for example, if you can play uh, cellos and basses if you can play measure 27 where you do this one two three four if you just say one two three four and play it correctly one two three four you, so there are notes that you play but you don't say that can be really really hard but if you can do it that means you know it and a good example for uh, violins, how about measure number 18? Let me challenge you to do this. One, two, three, four. So notice that there are rests when you say the number three, and then on beat two, you actually play on the end of beat two, but you don't say it. So it's this, one, two, three. Faster, ready. One, two, three, four. Ready. One, two, three, four. And one more example for the violas. No, let's do. So violas, I think you could do measure forty-two, and that would be interesting. Oh, that would be pretty tough, actually. Um, so it would be one. Two, three, four. Counting and playing. You can also apply that to any difficult measure if you're getting the timing wrong. It will make it harder at first, but it's a really fast way to get something to really groove and to sit right in the pocket, which means it's right where it should go. Send me any messages on Remind or through email. I think I prefer Remind, but uh, I'll get back to you. Uh, continue working on these pieces. And besides that, keep learning scales. You'll notice that on the website right now, I have a playlist for all the instruments, and there's like 15 to 20 videos that are each a different scale. And I challenge you to memorize as many scales as you can. Uh, you should have a scale sheet as well, but memorizing scales is what you really need to do, because every piece of music is just scales. All right, I talked too much. Let's get going. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.